If you get some mail that belongs to me, do you go and show up and say you're me? No. You, you can't do that. So if a private nonprofit corporation sends you a document and you have no contract with them, why should you go up and debate the contract? Because if you don't have a contract, right? If you don't have a contract, you don't have a contract. It's as simple as that. You don't need to go there and say all that. Just say, because here's my status and this and that and the other, right? Don't go in there trying to debate whether you owe money on the contract or not. Um, the bill was too high and all that. If you don't have the contract, why are you discussing the bill? It doesn't make sense, does it? First, you have to have a contract. So the first thing you need to understand when you walk in there, I don't care what the issue is. Here's the question. Do we have a contract? However, if you are not comfortable and you happen to get off your square and you get the ticket and you have to go to court, that's the first thing you have to say. I don't have a contract. And all of these courts, because they are corporations, the only type of policy they can deal with is contract policy. Not contract law, contract policy. If the state comes in and says, you're not treating your children right and we want to take them, right? The first thing you have to say is state. Do I have a contract that says I gave my children to you? Did I, at what point, produce the contract? Produce the contract. If you send me a bill and understand that if you belong to the corporate board state, you can't make these arguments because you do have a contract, which is the birth certificate, which is the marriage license, which a marriage license is your contract, is the woman's contract with the state and the man's contract with the state. It's not a contract between the man and the woman. Never was, never will be. Unless you have a prenuptial agreement or something else, you don't have a marriage contract. So the first thing you must ask is what? Do we have a contract? And if the answer is no, then I'm here under threat, duress, and coercion. You are violating my rights. It's as simple as that. You have no other reason to be there. Does that make sense? Okay. The original intent and purpose of all courts was to elicit justice from the decisions rendered. There were civil courts and criminal courts created to deal with separate areas of jurisdiction. Criminal acts as well as civil disputes were tried in common law courts. Common law is a trial by jury with the jury establishing the law of the case and the punishment. The judge in a common law trial was simply in the courtroom to make sure the proper papers were presented to the jury. The jury had all of the power in the courtroom and no common law decision could ever be overturned by the judge or by another court. All other courts were to be inferior to the common law court, including the Supreme Court. The courts allowed by the constitutions dealt mainly with contracts and commerce among corporations or disputes between living souls and corporations. State courts are the only courts that have criminal jurisdiction over crimes committed by living souls against other living souls and they only have jurisdiction over the inhabitants of their state. This is why Title 42 cases do not work in federal court as only state courts can try a criminal case. Federal courts were never given the power to try criminal cases involving any of the people of the states except treason, sedition and counterfeiting the coin of the U.S. other than those three crimes. Federal jurisdiction is only good within U.S. territories and possessions. United States territories and possessions do not include the 50 sovereign republics. There are only five crimes that the federal corporate government can take criminal action against and these crimes are restricted to federal reservations over which the federal government has exclusive jurisdiction. These five are espionage, sabotage, interference with the mails, destruction of federal property or frauds on the federal government. Federal courts assume criminal jurisdiction when the magistrate asks the defendant at the arraignment if the defendant understands the charges against him or, do you stand under the charges against you, and the defendant answers yes. The magistrate is asking, are you accepting the charges, always say no because this is an offer of contract from the court to place you under criminal jurisdiction. Charges and complaints are always against corporations and contract violations. Living souls or nationals cannot contract with a corporation. Living souls or nationals can only bring claims against each other and these claims are to be tried in common law courts. Unfortunately, the court systems began changing in 1926. With the creation of rules, regulations and codes that were signed by the Congress, the President and the BAR British Accredited Regency, 
the bar was creating its own private administrative procedures for corporations. Thus, the bar supplanted the judicial system. Remember, rules, regulations and codes are not law. They are an abrogation of the law and only corporations are subject to them. In 1946, the Administrative Procedures Act forever changed the course of government for the American people. Roosevelt called it the fourth branch of government. This act brought all branches of government and municipalities, except for the counties, under administrative codes, rules, and regulations. This in reality established each branch and municipality, which are mere corporations as an independent nation with each having their own codes, rules, and regulations. All corporations make up their own rules. Laws are established by the legislature through the passage of bills signed into law by the legislature and the governor-president. These laws must not abrogate the rights of the people or the supreme law of the land, the Constitution.